Hello again. I thought to, to talk right now about William Ramsey, the author of this, The Bearing of Recent Discovery on the Trustworthiness of the New Testament. His biography is rather remarkable in that Ramsey was later knighted for his contributions to history and researches in the Near East and specifically to the archaeology of the land we now call Turkey, which was Western Asia in the ancient world. Ramsey was a product of the skepticism of the middle of the 19th century. When he went to Oxford, he was deeply influenced by the latest studies of, of course, Darwin had just come into public consciousness about a decade before and the fruits of the German critical study of the Old and New Testaments were being felt everywhere in the English-speaking world. And when Ramsey got to Oxford, he shared the deep skepticism of his age about the nature of the Bible narratives and the skepticism about the historical reliability of even the New Testament, not to mention the Old. So when Ramsey wrote his key works in the... Uh, 1880s, 90s, and into the 20th century, Ramsey was coming from a position of deep skepticism to another position on the reliability of Scripture. And I'd like to read you a few paragraphs from this book where he traces some of his autobiography showing not only where he started and why he had those deeply held prejudices, but how he reoriented his mind, what it was that brought about that reorientation. Here's a couple more of his books, by the way, that you might want to trace down. This one is called The Church in the Roman Empire before AD 170. It's one of his earliest works. And this one, specifically this, on the seven churches of the book of Revelation, giving invaluable insights into the archaeological and historical situation against which those seven churches uh, were real and were addressed by the the letters to the seven churches in Revelation as to their local circumstances lot much of their their local circumstances can only be understood in the light of the researches of Ramsey and some others around the same time into the archaeology and an empire situation, you might say, of those seven cities. He also wrote a book called St. Paul the Traveler and the Roman Citizen. That's perhaps his most famous work. Again, doing yeoman work in showing the background of Paul's 13 epistles and his work as detailed in the Book of Acts. It was the Book of Acts, actually, that turned Ramsey around when it came to the re reliability of the New Testament. Here's his starting point. He describes the situation as it was when he was a young man at Oxford. He says, about 1880 to 1890, the book of the Acts was regarded as the weakest part of the New Testament. No one that had any regard for his reputation as a scholar cared to say a word in his defense. The most conservative of theological scholars as a rule thought the wisest plan of defense for the New Testament as a whole was to say as little as possible about the Acts. I began then to study the Acts in search of geographical and antiquarian evidence, hardly expecting to find any. But here's where Providence seemed to play a part in Ramsey's development as a scholar, because although he had intended to be a pro professor in some area of Greek culture in the in the uh, intellectual establishment of Great Britain at that time. Job choices actually chose his future for him and in which he saw the hand of providence because although he wanted to specialize in Greek culture and Greek history, he ended up instead studying Roman history. And it was his study of Roman history that brought him an assignment to go to Western Asia, that is, what we would call today West Turkey. Now he talks about what happened to him in the process of the next 10 years of archaeological and historical researches led him to this conclusion from the very first page of his preface. I shall read. The method is to show in this book through the examination word by word and phrase by phrase of a few passages which have been much exposed to hostile criticism 
that the New Testament is unique in the compactness, the lucidity, the pregnancy, and the vivid truthfulness of its expression. That is not the character of one or two only of the books that compose the Testament. It belongs in different ways to all alike, though space fails in the present work to try them all. Well, he wrote some dozen books, ultimately, by the time he died in the 1930s, elucidating some of his discoveries. Further, he says this about the general reliability of the New Testament. I do not follow the prevailing tendency of German criticism of the New Testament. It is wrong because it is narrow, and because it judges from erroneous premises and unjustifiable prejudices, and one welcomes any signs of a return to a saner and better informed judgment. Many very learned scholars have been blind to the grandeur of the thought in the New Testament, and the cosmic ideas which inform it throughout have been generally passed over have generally passed over their heads. So what he had learned by the time he put this book together in 1915 was that the prejudices, if they existed, were not biases in the heads of unlearned Christians, but were rather present or even more present in the heads of the skeptical scholars of Europe. Later in the book he says this about his own journey. Nature and the world were wise and kind, and always guided where I was erring and ignorant, or dare one venture to use a more personal form of the idea and speak of providence. This was the way that brought me to the study of Luke and Paul in the New Testament generally, when I found that my prepossessions and preformed opinions were wrong. The following chapters will show how the discovery of new evidence, partly by others, partly by myself, changed the judgment and formed opinions of one who had aimed at the truth and lived for truth. What of Luke himself, the historian who wrote, of course, the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, and by the way, putting those two books together, he wrote more of the New Testament than any other author, including John and Paul. What about Luke himself? Here's his summary of Luke's reliability. Luke is a historian of the first rank. Not merely are his statements of fact trustworthy, he is possessed of the true historic sense. He fixes his mind on the idea and plan that rules in the evolution of history and proportions the scale of his treatment to the importance of each incident. He seizes the important and critical events and shows their true nature at greater length while he touches lightly or omits entirely much was, that was valueless for his purpose. In short, this author should be placed along with the very greatest of historians. William Ramsey, The Bearing of Recent Discovery Upon the Trustworthiness of the New Testament. 